Greetings viewers, warriors with Got That Funk. I hope you're doing well. Um, my last video opining about the uh, Democratic debate was made following my second viewing of the actual debate itself, which was the day after the debate happened. And at the time I made that video, I hadn't seen any of the um, news media coverage regarding the debate. I watched the debate itself live on CNN, streaming it here, and it didn't end here uh, until about half past four in the morning or something like that. So I was pretty tired and I went straight to sleep. When I woke up, I watched the debate again on YouTube and then went straight into making my video. So I didn't really see any of the headlines and I was quite surprised after I made my video opining about the debate um, that all the major news sources in the USA had declared Hillary the obvious and unequivocal winner of the debate. Now let me be clear. Uh, debates of this nature, there's no such thing as a winner. Uh, you can say you had your favorite, who you thought performed the best, but uh, as far as winning a debate goes, uh, by definition that would mean that one party of the debate uh, made points which, you know, invalidated points being made by other parties. That didn't really happen and never really does happen in the type of debates that we're talking about uh, with presidential debates. So I, I want to stress that, you know, everybody is entitled to have their favorite, including media pundits. But uh, the fact that every single online poll, without exception, favored Bernie Sanders, and the fact that that was completely ignored, I'm not saying that they had to say, hey, we declare Bernie the winner because online polls say Bernie's the winner. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is they didn't even reference it. Not at all. Um, there were also, after debate forums, uh, put on by several news organizations around the country, and all of the forums also declared Bernie the obvious winner. And forums are a little bit more scientific. I mean, I can understand why a news organization might not take an online poll too seriously, because, you know, you can vote from abroad, uh, you can cast more than one vote in some of the polls. Some of them you can't, and some of them you can. Um, and I would forgive the news media for uh, writing off those polls if the results were sort of close-ish in, in favor of whichever candidate. But the fact is, uh, Bernie Sanders was the complete winner in every online poll by a factor of, you know, I think the closest one was 25% away from Hillary. Some of them had him sort of more than 60% ahead of Hillary. Uh, so, you know, the fact that Numbers like that. I mean, CNN's own poll, when I took the poll myself, Bernie Sanders was on eight, uh, sorry, 87% and Hillary was on 10. You know? So, again, they don't have to say this is reliable polling data, but the fact that they chose to ignore the polls completely, even their own polls, even CNN ignored its own poll. And I find that dubious in the extreme. I find it rather suspicious, and I hate to jump to sort of uh, conspiratorial conclusions, but I'm going to echo something Secular Talk said because I came to the same conclusion yesterday when I was researching this, which is, you know, Time Warner owns CNN, and Time Warner has donated over half a million dollars to the Clinton campaign so far, 475000 to her campaign itself, and then another 25000 plus to super PACs. So, <laughs> I think it's fair to say it's a little bit dodgy, to trust anything that CNN has to say regarding Hillary's performance on the debate. And um, I'm curious to find out how it's going to play itself out between now and the um, primaries, because it's, it's my understanding that we're going to be four Democratic debates between, uh, well, three more between now and the primaries, and uh, two after the primary season starts. So they're trying to keep the number of debates to a minimum. I think the DNC basically wants Hillary to be the nominee. And so they haven't really scheduled anywhere near the number of debates they did last time around. And last time around, the reason there were so many debates wasn't necessarily just because there were so many candidates running. It was because, you know, this is an open race. You know, there's no incumbent in this race. So everything's to play for for both parties. And that being the case, in, in, in last time around was 2008, and there was lots and lots of debates on both sides. And I know that sometimes the audience can get burned out of debates, but um, I was quite surprised to learn that uh, Tuesday night's debate had an audience of 15 million people when they were only expecting sort of, you know, less than 5 million. So I think that's a big deal, and it just goes to show that there are 
uh, a lot of people in the country who actually give a damn and want to find out you know more about the candidates and the fact is that even online polls like the Drudge Report uh, which is clearly a right-wing uh, website by any stretch of the imagination uh, still put Bernie Sanders in the lead by a wide margin a couple of right-wing sources did and uh, it was interesting to me that those right-wing online sources also had um, what's his name Jim Webb as the number two rather than Hillary as number two and I thought that was an interesting development uh, looking at it from the right hand or sort of sort of right political spectrum uh, Jim Webb seemed to appeal to those uh, people a lot more than Hillary did and to be honest you know like I've said before Hillary does come with her own set of baggage and there's just a lot of people in the country who simply would not countenance a Hillary Clinton presidency and not all of those people are on the right so I do find it a little bit dubious, you know, I say the conflict of interest with uh, CNN and the Hillary Clinton campaign means that from now on I'm not going to trust anything CNN has to say about the candidates at all. Basically I'm throwing CNN completely out as a credible source. And they've done that to themselves. Uh, you know, had they at least mentioned the focus groups and the uh, online polling and so on, I might be able to cut them a little bit of slack. The only major news outlet that I've come across online that uh, even came close to giving Bernie Sanders his due uh, was Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. And uh, even she uh, didn't really, I think, I mean, she, she did make reference to the forums, and uh, focus groups rather, and the online polls and so forth. And I think she even made reference to the fact that Bernie won the internet in terms of, um, you know, uh, new followers on Twitter and Facebook and campaign donations and, and uh, searches on Google and stuff like that. And that type of data uh, in the information age is not irrelevant, not by a long stretch. And it's with that in mind uh, that I encourage everybody the next time there is a debate to uh, tweet about it if you're on Twitter. Tweet about it nonstop. Just really go for it and uh, you know, make a point of mentioning your favorite candidate and why because all those mentions are being logged and they do get digested by people who are analyzing internet data. Same thing on Facebook. If you have a blog, um, I would hardly encourage you, the next time there is a debate, when there are online polls going on, screen cap those polls and uh, put that screen cap on your blog, put it on your Twitter, make sure it's out there for people to see because the media is clearly trying to basically paint this as if Clinton is utterly inevitable. And, you know, if you keep on telling people that there's no point voting for anybody else, they might just end up accepting it because, well, that's what they say on TV. Sadly, that's the unfortunate truth. I wonder how many people, when the actual polls do come out regarding the Tuesday night's debate by, you know, legitimate polling companies, I wonder how many people will have answered that poll based on what they saw the pundits reactions rather than trusting on their own reactions the fact that it's friday now and i haven't seen any polling data from genuine legitimate polling companies it's kind of seems suspicious to me normally you only have to wait till the next day before some polling data comes out and the fact that i haven't seen any or been able to find any is like i say it bothers me it actually bothers me a lot because i think that goes against uh, what we're normally used to expect. Anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, am, I, am I just being too conspiratorial in my thinking here? I don't think I am. I think there is a, a concerted effort amongst the establishment media to back the establishment candidate. And is that a coincidence? I don't know, you tell me. I mean, when Bernie Sanders is always going on about how the top 1% are the biggest problem that we have to deal with, and then you factor in the idea that the top 1% are the ones who own the fucking media and communications networks. It might stand to reason that they don't want to give Bernie a fair shout. That, plus in the case of Time Warner, who owns CNN, uh, donating huge amounts of money to Hillary Clinton's campaign. I think we, we, we deserve to look at this from a broad perspective and reserve overall judgment for sure, but I think some healthy skepticism towards the way the media is reporting this is definitely in order. Thanks for watching this video. I look forward to the next time we talk. Until then, may all your ups and downs be up.